So at this point, we have a Facebook account uh, for our business. And we've logged in with our personal credentials. And then we just switch to the business account, and then we can use it. And it's going to be very reminiscent of how we use a regular Facebook page. But it's got some differences. So what we're going to do here is let's first look at some of the settings for our page because we want to change some defaults that you may or may not actually like. So sort of like Facebook, like a regular personal page, you have to remember about looking at either the home screen or the actual page. When you're looking at the home screen, you're going to be seeing like your page can like another page. Uh, so you'll see that stuff. Just like when you have your personal account and you go to home, you will see the content of your friends and family or pages that you've liked. But when you go to your profiles page, it shows you your profile stuff. So like a business page is the same thing. Um, and yeah, like I said, your, your page can like another page. We'll see why you might want to do that in a little bit. But make sure you're on your actual business page's home page by clicking on the name of your page. And you should then see a button that says Settings. Let's go ahead and click on that and let's look at the settings of your page. There's a bunch of sections on the left here. We'll look at most of these screens. And uh, the first screen that we've got is General with all of these items. So mine says page visibility published, meaning it's out there for the world to see. If for whatever reason you want to take down your page temporarily, you can do that. That's different than at the very bottom, you've also got remove page. That will delete your page permanently. You probably don't want that. That's going to delete all your likes and all your traffic and insights and all your content. But if you just want to deactivate the page, maybe you're doing a rebranding or something, you can unpublish it and then turn it back on again and then you'll be you'll be visible again so social media I believe you can categorize it in two ways as it being a dialogue or being a monologue did I mention that before the dialogue and the monologue of social media no so if you think uh, in, in like a dictionary definition uh, maybe what's a monologue what do you think of Exactly. So then in contrast to that is a dialogue, which would be multiple people. You can manage social media the same way. One of them is not right or wrong, but I'll tell you which one I recommend. So your page can be a monologue of social media. Your page on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, can be that you're posting stuff all the time or whatever amount of time that you choose. You're posting stuff and people like your stuff and comment and whatever, but you never really answer back or you never follow back or you never engage with them. That's what I would say is you're, you're using it as a monologue. You're the only person really talking. Mono, which is one dialogue. So one dialogue, you're the only one. Your page is kind of publishing stuff out to the world. You never follow, follow through. You never answer back. The other way is the dialogue, which is you post stuff, people comment, People reply, and then you follow up to them. You say, thank you for your post, or thanks for your comment, or here's another thing. You actually have a dialogue, you know, die for, for two, to actually have a back and forth. So none of them is wrong, because a big company like Nike is maybe not going to be answering this little guy that asks about shoes, but maybe a lower-level company, a shoe store, might be replying to their customers. So it depends on your company how much effort you want to put into it. There's no right and wrong, but I recommend to have a dialogue in social media. Post your stuff, your pictures, your video, whatever, and if people reply to you or follow you or whatever, find some way to, to have a dialogue with them. Maybe follow them back if you don't want to do that, no problem. Maybe like something of theirs. Maybe comment on something of theirs. The point of that is that you're putting a more human face on your faceless, entity of a, of a Facebook business page, you're putting a human profile, a human face behind it, and that might entice people to like your page, buy your product, etc. So I would recommend a dialogue. And I say that because right here, posting ability. Anyone can post on my page timeline. Click on that edit button for a moment. 
to change it and it says you've got some options allow people to post on my timeline or don't allow people to post on my timeline that's what I'm saying are you gonna have a dialogue or a monologue none is wrong but decide what you want to do and I recommend allow people to post but I then recommend turn on review the posts so Facebook is great for controlling your message Twitter is great for putting out your message to the world but not controlling it and we see that all the time with Twitter fails the New York Police Department several months ago maybe a year ago wanted to do some community outreach on their Twitter so they put out a tweet uh, show us your hashtag my NYPD and they of course expected people to have smiling photos of people hugging police officers and everything and that's not what happened people started to put photos of police brutality and police excess and all of that with their hashtag so they took over their hashtag that you can't control your message on on Twitter you can control your message on Facebook you can do that right there you just turn on that option people can write any crazy thing they want on your page but it will not be visible until you approve it and that's not infringing on anyone's free speech this is your property just like you can't have any crazy person go to your lawn and start yelling at you you say get off my property so this is your property so uh, you can moderate it so if you are gonna have the dialogue I highly recommend you turn on this review posts moderating it just like on your WordPress site anyone can write whatever they want spammers can spam but nothing will appear until you approve it If you don't want to deal with any of that you can turn it off you can turn it off so that people don't post a photo or a picture but studies show that people are much more engaged on social media when there's a picture or a photo not just text I recommend leave it to allow posts but review them click Save you can change that again later no problem uh, this privacy don't worry about it it's already set well messages that's uh, related to again this dialogue the default if you click edit allow people to contact my page privately by showing the message button so if you want people to send you a message in Facebook privately no one else will see this they're gonna message you your your page and only you and it'll be visible here on your messages screen if you don't want that if you don't want people to message you just turn it off that one I don't have a preference for you can turn it on or off if you want whatever um, but it might be useful to put this here because let's say a person is complaining about your product and they posted it on on the screen and everyone's gonna see it and see that bad review well if you have the ability for them to private message you you can take that off publicly and deal with it privately so <coughs> that it doesn't give your company a black eye so I would select I would suggest leave the messages on like I said don't worry about it tagging ability that one uh, don't worry about that one either the default is fine country and age restrictions this depends on you country restrictions you can say people in these countries only these people in these countries can see your Facebook page or people in these countries cannot see my page so let's say whatever your page is about but you don't want it to be shown in Canada for some reason so you can select Canada you can type Canada and say hide this page from those countries or you can say I'm only gonna be targeting Mexico I only want to sell my products there so type Mexico and then save it only show this page to those viewers so that's up to you what you want I'm gonna leave it alone anyone in the world can see it and then you can do age restrictions you've got basically anyone which is anyone over 13 because the rules of Facebook are is that you have to be at least 13 years old to use Facebook so if your little cousins are using Facebook and they're 10 years old tell them that they're gonna get in trouble Facebook is really only for 13 year olds or older 
Um, so here, if your business should be for 21 and up, you can select that. So you won't have minors looking at it and then getting you in trouble for them looking at your page. Or 17 or 18 or whatever. And you've got alcohol related, which changes depending on the country. In the US, you have to be 21 to drink. In Canada, I think you can be 18. So if you need any age restrictions, you can change them there. Again, to control your message, to control the integrity of your site, you can do some page moderation such as block posts or comments containing the following words. So if um, you know you have a page all about dog products, you know, dog food and dog toys and all of that, and you don't want people coming to your account and start trolling you about cat stuff, you can make the word cat a blocked word. So if someone starts posting about cats, that will not show up. That's pretty useful. The problem is um, you're limited to 10,000 characters. So there's a limit, but that's a lot. So that's up to you to decide on page moderation. I won't do anything there. Profanity filter. Notice a bunch of these also have a little question mark. If you hover over them, they give you a little help. So profanity filter. You've got medium and strong and off. So I'm not sure if this will automatically remove the post or just the word. But you can change that so if you want no profanity, you can um, turn that on. But people can be clever and instead of writing the whole word, they put in an exclamation point instead of the vowel. So, you know, how effective is it? So I'm going to cancel that. Similar page suggestions. Uh, this one is fine, leave it alone. But what, what, I, what will I say about there is that that's good. I want it so that when someone likes a page related to art, my page might also be suggested to them. That's what that's about. Your page would be suggested to people once they like something related. If for whatever reason you want to turn that off, you could, but I don't recommend it. Uh, comment ranking, that's fine. Leave it alone. Don't worry about it. Merge pages. If you've previously made a Facebook page, or what's happened to me and my business is we get hired to do someone's uh, Facebook page or their social media, but someone had previously created their Facebook page and they didn't do it right, but they, for example, claimed the name. And now we need to create a new one for them. Uh, well, we've got two conflicting pages. We can merge them there. And then you've got the delete page. That's to remove everything. Let's say you get tired of it all, you want to delete it. There it is, but it is the final option. So be careful. Any questions on this screen? Uh, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. What if the page is different? That's fine. You can have multiple pages. There's no problem there because probably uh, your content will be slightly different. Is it advantageous to merge them? Like, say, it's Spanish and English. Uh, it's advantageous in that it's less work, because then you don't have to deal with two different pages. Uh -huh. It's a little less advantageous, because then all the messages will be mixed together. So people that are expecting something in Spanish will get something in English, and vice versa. So if you want people to only see something in a certain language, they should be separate. Let's go look at page info. Uh, actually, page info has moved to another screen, so we'll go over to that other screen in a moment. So uh, actually, let's go to post attribution. This is what I'm saying. This is going to try to help you keep track of, are my posting as my account business page, or am I po posting as my personal? For whatever reason, mine says, post as Victor's art as myself or post as Victor's art as the page. That looks confusing to me already. So I'm going to ignore this 
And like I said, remember to switch between accounts with the triangle. There will be no ambiguity there. This thing that it's telling me here, your posts and likes, etc., will be attributed to the page by default. When you're creating or replying to a post, you will still have the option to post as yourself. Okay? Your posts, likes, and comments on this page I know, will be attributed to you by default, which is exactly what that said. When you're creating or replying a post, you will still have the option to post as the page. So there's slight nuances there. Which is better? I don't know. I still don't get it. So I'm just going to switch back and forth between the triangle. Notifications. I would recommend that you turn on this option here. It's off. You've got you've used Facebook before, probably. You've seen these notifications at the top. These alert you that something's happening on your page. And here it says, it's off. Don't show me that. That's weird. I want to see that. I want to see when someone likes my page or comments on my page. So each time it happens, or once every 12 hours or whatever, I want it as soon as it happens. I want the notification. And then which notification? Basically all of them. They're already on, so if you turn them off, you won't see them. But no, I want to see when I get a new like. I want to see when I get a new message, etc. Because again, I'm going to run social media as a dialogue. If someone likes my page, that's great. But I also want to go look at that person's account and maybe like something of theirs to show them like, oh, this company cares. Maybe I will buy something from them. Or if you um, write something on their profile after they liked your page, again, you're showing that you're a real person behind the page. So I want to know about that. Do you want to get an email when that happens? That you can change if you want. If you don't want an email every time, and these could add up, cluttering your mailbox, you can change that if you want. Uh, I'm going to say I'm going to turn that off, actually. I, don't, I'm, I'm, I run a lot of Facebooks, so I get too many, so I'm going to turn it off. But for yourself, you might leave it on, and then you'll be getting emails that something happened. But if you've got the app, the app will notify you anyway, so you might not need extra emails. Any questions on notifications screen? Um, on, on the email question, mm -hmm. I, I know that I that I had a given email for my personal post, but say I want like an info email or a contact email. Gonna We're going to change that when we go look at the page info screen in a moment. Oh, okay. Let's go look at page roles. This is what I said that more than one person can manage this page. And what's cool is that you can give them different levels of control. So I would say the easiest thing to do here is, let's say John is another person that I want to edit this page. I would invite John to like the page. Once he's liked it, I come back to this screen and put their name there, and then they'll get a notification that says you've been invited to manage this page. Once they have that managerial position, then they will be able to change up here whenever they want. And then you can set it right here. Different levels. Notice I created this page, so I'm set as an admin which means I can manage all aspects, including sending messages and posting, creating ads, seeing which admin created a post, viewing insights, and assigning page roles. So everything. I can even delete the page. So if I set someone else, if I set John here as the manager, well, maybe as an editor. They can edit the page, send messages, post as the page, create ads, see which admin, and insights, but they can't add more managers. They can't delete the page. So an editor is still very powerful, but he can't do everything. And there's other levels decreasing, moderator, and you can read what they do there. But you can decide what each of these does. Probably you'll be working with either adding other admins or editors, but be careful here. 
because if you're setting other people as admins, they have a lot of control, meaning they could also remove you as a manager. There is a time period though, I think it's two weeks. Once you add a brand new person as an admin, they cannot remove you as an admin in two weeks. But if they wait three weeks and act really nice to you, and then on the third week, and then they remove you, and then now you don't have access to the page anymore. So you have to know who you're giving power to. So after you uh, write the name there, and what you say, is this going to send you a notification? Or how is this going to send you a notification? It's going to send them an email, and then I believe it will also oh. give them a notification up on top on, on their Facebook. So they will get the notification to manage the page. When we, when we set up our page, in the beginning, remember we said our target audience. If we want to change that, it's under preferred page audience. So, why, yes? Why do I, I, don't, I don't find that one. Too. You don't see preferred page audience? No. You're sure you're editing your page up on top here? It shows your page's name. It's up su suggested then to which one is your page for supports. Okay, uh, if you if if people don't see exactly what I see, the reason might be because of the um, of the kind of page that we created. You know, remember there was business or local business or community and such, and I'll show you where you can change that elsewhere. But if you don't see preferred page, don't worry. But on another screen, I'll show you where to maybe change it to show it to you. You've probably visited <clears throat> Facebook pages that have some cool like widgets, like a map of all locations, or a sign up now button, or whatever. Those are apps. So that's kind of complicated to talk about. But I'm just going to mention that under apps, you can think of them like WordPress widgets. And remember, WordPress widgets add more features to your site. So apps would add more features to Facebook. Now these, I think apps used to be very popular. Not as much because now, now they're not really free like they used to be. People are seeing, well, there's a billion people on Facebook. Let me make a, let me make a map app and I'll get people to get it and then pay for it. So. I don't really use any apps for any of the clients. We can usually make it do what we want without an app. But if you need a particular app to people to sign up before they can get a coupon, there probably is an app for you. And how to set one up, like I said, it's complicated. You have to first search it up here, you'll get a list of apps, then you'll get install and set it up and all of that. So don't worry about apps unless you really care about them. You should be okay without any apps. The older your page is and the more you use it and so forth, of apparently per, uh, per, perhaps you might get suggested edits from Facebook that says, okay, don't forget to do this. Or maybe try that because this worked. I don't have any suggested edits because my page is brand new. You might have them as you use it. And I would follow the suggestions because that's Facebook trying to help you. Featured. Again, like I said, your page could like other pages. And you might want to set it so that those likes appear on the home screen. Think about it this way. Let's say you've got a restaurant and you've got five locations in five states. Each of those locations could have their own Facebook page. So facebook.com slash Victor's Restaurant San Diego. Facebook.com slash Victor's Restaurant Chicago. Victor's Restaurant, blah, 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 New York. I could have five different Facebook pages. We could like each other's page and show those likes on, on each of our home screens so that we get traffic to each of our pages. So you can show your likes. By default, the person that created the page is not visible on the page, which is probably good. You don't want your name 
as the social media person to appear on the business page unless that's what the contract stated let's say um, so your page owners will not appear unless you set that right here so all of these pages up here that I manage my name does not appear when I post something it's posted as the page if I wanted my name to appear there on that account I would have to activate it under page owners so it says your your personal info will be displayed in the about section and this page will be shown on their personal profile so a, a, a scenario where I might want to use this well this is Victor's art I might want my personal profile linked there banned users so if people are being abusive there'll be an option there to ban the user again no free speech restrictions here because again free speech relates to uh, as uh, it comes from the Constitution and it relates to government entities infringing upon your rights of free speech that does not apply to private property and this is your private property so you can ban people no problem keep it civil and then you can uh, manage them right here unban them for example if they if they did if they um, got out of uh, problems you can uh, there's a help section to get in touch with uh, the people at Facebook to help you fix problems and all of that will be listed under the page support and they do answer there there are people that are being paid to to help you on Facebook and I've contacted them I've dealt with clients that uh, you know someone's friend created their Facebook but they did it all wrong or whatever so we needed to take it over and merge it with this new one and we contacted Facebook and they did it there was another one where um, there were multiple locations on Facebook we merged them into one and so they do get back to you uh, it's under page support activity log if you click on that that switches over to the screen that you won't see anything yet if you're brand new but this is the activity log where it'll show you everything that's happened on your site so you can look at any photos that have been updated any spam you might have gotten look at all your posts all your people's comments any events that you created and so forth if people are messaging you etc and if you have a very popular page this might have a lot of stuff here so you want to take advantage of search here activity search you're like what was that great post that someone wrote that was praising my company again you can search for it find them and then you know do the dialogue maybe communicate with them because a happy customer is a paying customer let's go back to pages or to page right here your main screen and then we'll go look at the about right this is where we can edit some of those features that it said this has moved to this other screen so go back to your page and then click on about Here we go, page info. So again, yours may be different than mine. That's okay. I'll show you what I've got here and explain these. Um, up on top is category. So if you're on the wrong category, you can edit it. If you want to change the name of the that appears on the page, you can change it. But again, that's not the Facebook address. The Facebook address is right there. So I want facebook.com slash Victor's Art. So if I click to edit that, you may have the stipulation that says you need at least 25 fans before you get the name so this is one of the reasons why you might be inviting your 100 friends and family at least if you get those 25 likes then you'll be able to claim your name 
sometimes when you're creating the page it will let you claim the name right away but sometimes not so if you get 25 likes 25 fans you'll be able to claim your name the very very first post on Facebook was your is your start info there and you can have it say something like born on founded on started on opened on created on launched on uh, so like Southwestern College's Facebook page I think there says founded on founded on you know what is it 1963 I think So the very, very first post that is going to be on your Facebook is what, what was your start info. Um, you can leave it unspecified, but I would recommend to choose one of these. Like your company was founded on, or your Facebook page was started on, or your store opened on, or your app was created on, or whatever you want. So I'm going to say my company was founded in 2014 December even down to the day what's the point of that well that's part of your story remember the company profile activity there was that who are you about uh, who are you what's your story why is your name all of that stuff that we did in the company profile and marketing strategy that's to build the you know the the about us or the legend of your company so uh, that's part of it there the story <clears throat> if you enter an address so a physical location this will allow people to check in this will allow people to view their Facebook app and then they're they're hungry for Italian food and they type Italian and the app will tell them oh there's three Italian restaurants nearby such as Victor's Italian food and then they can check in they can give you a rating for your food a comment etc so if you put an address it will allow people to check in on your location this is optional short description is what we wrote at the beginning you can change that and then we've got long description. So if those 160 characters are too short, here you've got like a thousand. So you can write more about yourself. And again, take advantage of that to write what you're about and think about the terms, think about it in terms of keywords. What are the keywords about my company? Art, drawings, uh, artwork. You know, how am I going to incorporate those keywords into my long description? Company overview and long description are related. There's probably a subtle difference, but maybe think of company overview as in terms of bullet points. Like, what do you do? You might That might overlap with your short description and your long description, but think about writing your company overview like bullet points. What does your company do? So I'm going to say here, original artwork, signed works, easy shipping perfect for gifts so I'm writing kind of like one sentence at a time um, like the bullet points of what the company overview is and then in the long description I can go in here and just copy and paste from your company profile Victor's Art was founded with the belief that everyone should be able to own artwork. You'll find here original drawings sold as one of a kind. And again, I would take the time here to write a paragraph or copy that from your company profile. Reword it if you want. Maybe not the full three paragraphs, 
because people might not read that much especially on a social network where things are happening quickly all the time. So you can work on your long description at your leisure. Um, Moving on here, Impressum. This is not required for you unless you're in a specific country. And it says here the specific countries are Austria, Germany, and Switzerland. So apparently they've got laws where you have to write a statement of ownership of the web presence. So their laws say, okay, just because anyone can create a Facebook doesn't mean that they should not be held accountable for it. Um, that they can't be held accountable for it. So you have to write here something about who is the creator of this Facebook page, the actual people. But again, that is only required if you're in one of those countries. So I'm not, so I won't. Mission. Hey, didn't you have an assignment where you wrote that? So you can enter your mission there. Founded, same thing. Enter the names of founders. This is all optional. But the more you fill this in, the better, because if people are searching for a person's name and that name is connected to the Facebook page, they might find the Facebook page. Any awards, fill that in. Any products, you can fill that in. But really, you're not going to be selling products here, so you might put like three or four of them, five of them, like bullet points. But really, your products are going to be sold on your website. This is just going to show that you've got products to sell and such, but you're not really going to sell them on Facebook. You're going to sell them on your page, your website. Do you want people to contact you via phone or email? Well, here's a place to write that in. There's my website, and then official page. This probably won't apply to you. Enter the official brand, celebrity, or organization your page is about. So as I said, anyone can create any page about anything. So if I wanted to, I can create yet another Twilight fan page. And then I could set this as, this is my page according to that official topic. This is your page about your topic, so you don't have to say that you're the official page because you are the page. But if you're making a page for some other official thing, you should fill that in. Okay, so today's topic of Facebook, we'll actually, we're actually going to spend two class meetings on. So today we're going to wrap up in just a moment. There will be no homework. When we come back next time, we'll talk more Facebook, and then there will be a homework. But I'm also going to send you an email with some videos to look at, like I sent you for, uh, for, uh, for Twitter. So uh, I'm going to put those on Blackboard, and I'll send them out to you. You want to watch those videos, learn a little bit more about Facebook. When we come back, I'll show you some things that are not in those videos, and then there'll be an assignment. What I want to do before we wrap up is um, hopefully, like, like I said, hopefully you've got your page filled out a little bit more and then you want to invite your friends and so forth. But if you notice, if you go back to your, um, if you click back on page to view the page, I don't see the buttons that were there previously about invite your friends. The way you see that is you switch back to your personal account.
and then you have to at the top here search for your page uh, Victor's Bakery your page Victor's Bakery or Victor's Art and it should pop up right away because it's your page so I want to switch over to my page from searching not from the triangle usually you're gonna switch with the triangle but you have to do this one weird trick so that you can invite your friends once you look at your page but I'm still my account now I have here invite your friends so you might want to invite your friends to get to those 25 likes so you can claim your name before someone takes it Uh, when we talked about Twitter, I believe I had said in there, and, and if I didn't, I want to reiterate that um, the catch with social media is I want followers and I want likes and so forth because I can advertise to them. But the catch is that if I were trying to get people to like my page right now, they probably wouldn't because they don't see a picture, they don't see any posts, they don't see anything. So some of your friends may like your page just because they're your friends, and that's fine. I just want some likes so I can get my name. Um, it is better to have your profile filled out and a post or two, you know, a status or a picture before inviting people. And when we come back next time, you should, you should have watched the video that I'm going to send out about post recommendations and so forth, and then we'll talk more about them. That way to entice people to actually like your page instead of liking a brand new blank page like, I don't know what they're about. Am I going to care about them? Maybe not, so I won't like it. So you can invite your friends and family if you want to now, or you can wait. No problem. Okay. And when we come back, we'll talk about effectively writing posts, getting more likes, and um, using Facebook effectively, and then a homework assignment. Any general questions? How do you Invite them. You just have to open the, the page and then. Yes, like I showed a moment ago. I'll help you in, in a moment because it is a little weird, but I'll, I'll show you in a moment. Any other general questions? Uh, yes. Uh, I read this to myself, but how do you think the default picture? So. You know, there's like a computer on one of the public page. Is it the is it the picture no, right here? Like oh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, let me help you in just a moment, and we'll get that figured out.